Hello everyone and welcome back to Genie Crafts. In today's video, we are going to take a look at how to do a half tone pattern portrait. The video is divided into two parts. In the first part, we are going to see how to generate the half tone stencil and in the second part, we'll talk about the various techniques that can be used to get this half tone portrait right. So let's get started with the stencil part first. To generate the half tone stencil, open the website halftonepro.com and if you already have a login then login if you don't have a login then create a free login this is how the home screen is going to look like once you log in whatever last image you have worked upon will be present whenever you log in into this particular uh, website upload the image for which you want to generate the half tone pattern using the upload button on the left hand panel once you have uploaded the image, go to the preset section in the extreme left hand panel and there you will see the various options that you can utilize to generate the half tone pattern. Click on the first option that is the line pattern. The moment you will do that, you will see your image getting converted into line based half tone pattern. That is, you will see slanted lines. If you'll notice that your half tone pattern will always be into two colors or maximum three colors. Uh, Normally when you say half tone pattern, it means a black and white pattern only uh, with the pattern being accentuated either by the white patterns or by the black patterns depending upon the contrast ratio in your images. There are other options also available like the spiral waves or plus signs or circles or triangles or different various shapes are there. But the one that is most useful for paper cutting is the line pattern because when you are doing it with line pattern there is a continuity throughout the image whether it is slanted line or it is a spiral line. In other kinds of patterns it will be difficult to cut because you won't be able to maintain the continuity of the paper while doing the paper cutting. For this tutorial we will be working with the line pattern that is the first option. So it will be a black and white pattern. There will be black and white lines going throughout the image. So you can either remove the black lines or you can remove the white lines. If you decide that you have to remove the white lines instead of the black lines then in that case you need to go to the pattern section and select the image inverted option in the size by drop down. This will create a negative for your image so that when you will cut out that white lines on a white paper printout and put it against a black background you will get the actual image as it should be rather than a ghosted or a negative output after doing the paper cutting. This is an important step so please remember decide on what you want to remove if you want to remove the black then you don't need to select this option but if you want to remove the white color from a printout then you need to select this option. I will put out a separate video with more detailed options with regards to half tone patterns. But for now, once you are happy with your line based half tone pattern, click on save image and select the .png option which allows you to save image without uh, going for the upgraded account. For .svg you will need an upgraded account. Also when you will download this .png image, it is going to come with a watermark. Uh, because it's a free account so there is a watermark there but that watermark will not hinder you in any form in your paper cutting so you can ignore it and go ahead with your paper cutting. So here is the printout of the stencil and even though the website does a good job of creating almost perfect stencil for you, you still need to do a little bit of work on it. The first thing that you need to do is to create borders on each side of your stencil so that you know at what point you need to cut it. Once you have done that then depending upon what color you have decided to remove you need to check if the other color lines are entirely interconnected from one end to the other end that means that if the line is starting from the left side and going till the right side border you need to see that it is completely connected through and through if it is not then in that case you can use a white pencil or you can use a white gel pen and using your scale you create a connected line path don't worry it will not ruin the final effect of your stencil because you are just creating a thin line but you need to do that so that all the white lines which in my case I am not cutting out are connected through and through. You might ask that will it not work if I will not connect it? It will still work if you will not connect it but then uh, it will become very difficult to handle the paper cutting as you cut more and more lines. Since this is all line based so your stencil is going to become very fragile very soon. So even when you are just halfway through the paper cutting of this particular stencil, it will become very difficult to handle the paper as the entire paper is going to become very fragile. So it's good that the color that you are not removing is interconnected 
on both the ends completely. Once you have readied the stencil, then move from one corner and move towards the diagonally opposite corner in a sequence. Do not break the sequence. It will become very difficult for you to handle the paper if you do not cut it in a sequence. Also, you will notice that there are a lot of very thin black lines and very thin white lines. Since we are removing the black color, so while cutting, even if you break the black lines, it is still okay because anyway, you have to remove them from the stencil. But when you come to the thin white lines, you have to ensure that you are not breaking them because these are the ones that you are keeping and not cutting out. So ensure that these lines do not break. Also at the start, you can do the diagonal cuts on the different lines and then remove them from the borders in a bulk. But as you proceed in the paper cut, do not apply this technique. Remove each line completely and then proceed to the next line. Like you saw that at the start, it was very simple. So I removed the lines in bulk, but uh, going forward, I'll be removing each line completely before I proceed to the next line. One of the ways to ensure that your lines do not break is that first of all, do not rush it. Do it very slowly and very carefully. And second, keep your thumb very near to the point of the blade as you proceed down the cut. Ensure that your thumb is also moving alongside with the tip of the blade. It will ensure that your thin lines do not get stretched out and break due to the stress of the cutting. These line based half tone patterns may look very simple to cut because this is what just lines diagonally throughout the pattern. But it's very easy to get cross eyed when you look at the pattern for some time. I always get cross eyed whenever I look at the pattern for too long. So uh, take breaks in between when you are cutting it. Do not uh, try to cut it uh, in one go because chances are that you might cut a line that you are actually supposed to remove. So carefully start with each line and you know see carefully where you are going to cut and only then start with the cutting as you keep moving towards the opposite diagonal you will notice that somewhere around halfway through the stencil the paper will start becoming very fragile and even a little movement can break the strips so please be very careful for that uh, because these strips tend to entangle with each other so keep a track of it when you are rotating your paper for cutting and ensure that uh, they are not struck with each other or they are not entangled with each other while you move. after you have removed all the black strips now it's time to cut a border around your stencil so that your final half tone portrait paper cut is ready lastly put your paper cut upside down on a solid background preferably a black background and you can see the effect of the half tone paper cut you'll also notice that some strips are misaligned this normally happens due to the stress that the strips has to go through when you are doing the paper cutting. So there are two ways to adjust it. One is that you can uh, align the strips properly and then put some weight on top of it for them to settle down. Or you can glue them to the background using small micro dots of glue or adhesive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you guys liked it, then please do not forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel for more videos on paper arts. I will see you guys very soon in my next video. Till then stay safe, take care and bye bye.